I installed an Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 EFI system on this 5.3 LS engine. And this video will take me from opening it up all the way to where this sits right now, which is nearly ready to run. I have uh, a little bit more wiring to do. I have to run the fuel lines and uh, put in a radiator too before I start it. But uh, this video here will take us up to this point. And the second video I make in a couple days should have everything wrapped up and I could start it for the first time. First thing is first, and that is to change the uh, fuel crossover pipe from the back of the intake to the front. And I'm glad to see that all these fittings are uh, what I believe <clears throat> is a straight 6AN with uh, O-ring. So that's pretty universally standard. Here is the uh, thread pitch right there. I have the manifold sitting on the engine to check my clearance for the what will eventually be the fuel feed. And I have plenty of room there. So switching the crossover pipe to the front of the LS with this uh, truck style alternator you have enough room for that, and it's probably the way to go if you have the space behind the firewall. And if it's too tight, you can see the back of the passenger side cylinder head valve cover is about in line with the dash 6 AN output of the fuel pressure sensor. If this is too tight, you can always remove the sensor right here, put a 90, and then at that point, uh, you'd have a little bit more clearance. Just something to think about. And I would bolt this down right now with the gaskets, except they did not include bolts. And the factories won't work. So... Why wouldn't you include them? <laughs> From what I could tell, it's six millimeter by one, and the length of the bolt needs to be 50 millimeters from below the head of the bolt. And that will get about 15 millimeters of thread into the heads, which seems to be about right. <laughs> the intake manifolds bolted down. I'm glad I used um, 50 millimeter long bolts because the instructions call for uh, 11 foot pounds, 132 inch pounds, whereas the factory manifold is only 89 inch pounds. So I went through uh, first pass at 44, second pass at 89, and the third pass at 132. If these bolts were a little bit short, you would easily strip those threads because that's a quite a bit of torque on a six uh, metric size bolt into aluminum. And I ran a drop of blue Loctite on the bottom uh, since that's what the factory manual calls for. I suppose you could par probably use a sealant too, but um, I had the blue, so I figured I would use it. But just be careful. Uh, the bolts I used again are six millimeter by 50 millimeter long, and they worked for me. I would make sure you don't use anything shorter than that because I could really see some uh, damage to the uh, cylinder heads. Also, I used silicone spray on the gaskets to lubricate them and also hold them in place, and it seemed to work okay. Everything is cinched down nice and flat and even, um, so everything looks to be good. All right, next is the O2 sensor and the bung I already have installed here. The instructions say the O2 sensor needs to be like five degrees above horizontal, like this. <laughs> However, my bung is like that. That's right, my bung is like that. Famous last words. That's what she said. Anyways, I think that is so uh, moisture doesn't get stuck inside the tip. Again, that's what she said. But, um,. It's too late for me to change it now. The Y pipe was all pressure tested and then powder coated, so I'm gonna run with it. 
and uh, I'll install that and go on to the next step, which I believe should be starting to route the harness on the top. I'm gonna start routing the harness. Uh, there's three harnesses in total. The main harness, which has the computer, the two umbilical cords, and a couple sensors, as well as the injector harness with manifold air pressure, uh, air temperature sensors, coolant temperature. And then there's this harness, which is the coils, um, I think crank, cam, I guess, I have to look. Idle air control. Anyways, I'm gonna start with the injector harness and I'm going to try to route it underneath the intake since it seems to be wrapped in a really nice heat uh, appropriate friction tape. And then I'll wrap up with the second harness uh, running on top of the intake. <laughs> There's a lot going on, big rat's nest of wires. I'm gonna spend some time with wire ties to try to clean this up as much as possible. So the length from the cam sensor to the umbilical cord is kind of short. So this is really the line between the cam sensor and the crank sensor is what determines the location of this cord end. So. I'm going to work my way backwards and try to clean this all up. I have the two harnesses installed and wire tied together. I'm considering bringing the umbilical cord through the firewall here and installing the computer somewhere under the dash. And if that won't work, I'll bring it outside the firewall here. So I'm going to try to work this out. And uh, so far, I'm a little disappointed in the length of the wires. I thought since this is a specific application, they would have designed these harnesses to fit tightly. But as you can see, there seems to be no rhyme or reason why they are in the positions that they're in. It might be so that the harness is universal to the other intake, but um, it just means that it makes for a less than what I would consider neat installation. Once the air cleaner is on, you won't see any of this, but it's still, uh, like you can see, yeah, you can see some of the wires are tighter than they probably should be. Anyways, I'm going to work on installing the computer with this bigger harness. And then... Unfortunately, some of the wires from this portion of the computer have to still go back outside. Um, why they would, here's the fuel pump source and this is the O2 sensor. So if these are gonna be by the engine, why wouldn't these be incorporated into the two harnesses that are already at the engine? And then that would simplify just one cord, either going through the firewall or routing from the back of the engine to wherever the computer mounts. So, uh, yeah, just not to mention, like, the two fan controls are in the same place as the tack. But the tack has to go in and the fans have to go out. So why not put them at different parts of the harness? Oh, well, it's easy for me to say because it's supposed to be for a universal application, not vehicle specific. But that's one thing I noticed. All right, I'm going to work on finding a place for this computer. Okay, so everything is wrapped up on the engine. The only part I still need to add is the uh, air temperature sensor, which will go in the bottom of my air cleaner. The two main umbilical cords right here are gonna pass through the firewall. And I have a factory grommet to go back here. 
and I mounted the computer right here on the air box. I drilled through the air box, mounted a, a, a stud, and then locked tight a nut on it. So uh, if I do have to take off this computer to either replace it or whatever else, um, you just remove these brass screws and it'll pop off. This is a nice connector. Um, this really should be covered more and I'm gonna have to wire tie this and change some things because um, the tighter you make this and the more you strap everything to themselves, the less strain on the individual wires you'll have. Um, same with like this, the weight of this CAN bus connector. This really should be supported by the wire so you're not levering outside of the connector. So um, things to do would be, since the computer here is inside the cab, things like the tag stays in, but these two fan outputs need to go back out through the firewall. And they're not included in that umbilical cord, so these need to go out to the firewall. I'll leave the CAN bus here. I'll probably just double side tape it to the uh, computer. And this is really close to the computer, which is fine, except that um, typically you'd want to hide the computer, and this doesn't give you much room to put this anywhere. So, um, I know each each application is different, but for this one, uh, these all these wires have to be lengthened and changed and then brought outside. Same with these. Um, this is a fuel pump wire. This is your battery positive negative. This is your O2 sensor. So why they separated those out of this harness uh, doesn't make much sense to me because, to, I mean, I don't know, maybe there's an application where this makes sense to have the relay in the fuse so close to the computer. But if you plan on putting the computer inside to get it out of the elements and you have everything else conventional, like the battery outside underneath, on the other side of the firewall, um, and you have like a fuse block or a relay panel outside, um, I mean, you have to change all this, which is okay. It's just something to keep in mind. Since this is a universal kit, you should expect to have to move some stuff around. But uh, some of the choices they made, I'm not really sure how this would work for most applications. Um, so the two fan contacts go out. The What I believe is the um, fuse to actually power the computer. That'll go outside. This main fuse, uh, the relay and the fuse will both go out. This ignition source will stay in. Ignition source will stay in. Um, along with attack, and then the O2 positive negative fuel pump, which uh, I'm actually going to run a relay for that too, will go out to the uh, firewall. And then in that same loom, I'll have the oil pressure sensor come in and the coolant temperature sensor for the gauge come in as well. So I'll have, um, I'll have it made so if the tub ever has to come off the chassis, there's like four plugs to undo and all the wiring for the engine should be separate from uh, the tub. And this is really nice. Last thing I'll say is um, this is nice and compact, especially compared to the factory GM computer. The only thing that is a little lacking, like I said before, is uh, the way they brought this in. This really should be supported all the way up with some type of strain relief uh, so you're not twisting and bending as you bring this around especially because uh, this wrap is pretty stiff. So, okay, for right now, that's all the farther I'm gonna get. Um, the next video will be probably um, running the fuel to it and then the test run. And I hope to do that sometime in the next couple days. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.